algebra 2. Seventeen and a C, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you can do. Yeah, because I was like trying to factor out the three C squared minus two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you just get something that it only has that one basic step of factoring. There's really not much else you can do. <clears throat> and that's the way it goes. Somehow. Oh, yeah, I just got to focus. Set aside the. Did set aside the paper. I don't know if any football guys want the want to actually copy the paper. If you're interested, you can just grab it on your way out. Um, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but um, pretty good coverage of the game and such. Okay. Any questions you got? Okay. Looks like you guys are still checking things. I'll give you a couple more minutes. question on 45 is why, what, what are they doing? Why is there two sets of numbers? Well, I think if you solved it, you got like 24 and negative 26. Is that right? 24 and negative 26? Negative 24 and 26. Negative 24 and 26. I'm going to take a look at that real quick. Because there's just one, one small thing I want to show you real quick. Um, yeah, so it should be x is 24 and x equals negative 26. So watch your negatives when you're solving it. Ooh, and the autofocus back. Okay. So, but why do the answers look like look like they do? Well, 24. What you what we're solving for is x. X is my first number. So, my first number being 24, they're asking for find two consecutive evens. Well, if x is 24, my consecutive evens are 24 and 26. My first number is 24, and my second number is 26. And then if my first number is 20, negative 26, well, then my next even would be negative 24. 
So there's actually that set of numbers will work and this set of numbers will work. Because I kind of look at it this way. This is a number that plants the seed of every single number that is a result of that starting point x. And then so that gives you two numbers that'll work and this gives you two numbers that'll work. So then I multiply those two together, I get a positive 624. But multiply these two together, I get a positive 624. Okay. Okay. Anything you want to talk about? Anything where you got stuck, you weren't quite sure what to do, or um, your answers differed a little bit? Gina, yeah? Mm -hmm. I had 3y squared minus 48 times 5y. Okay, you can just take out more. Always take out everything you can. Okay? So I got a 15y. So um, let me write down what you had. Okay? So you had a what? 3y squared. 3y squared times? Uh, minus 48. Minus oh, okay. Okay, so that is factored, but it's not fully factored. Why? Because I can take a 3 out of this as well. Okay, so you factored it, but you can even go just a little bit further. And then that's going to allow you to even break it down further than that since you get the difference of two squares. Okay. Um, oh, now hold on. Um, okay, hold on. Stop. We can't take out a 5y. We could take out a 5. Yeah. And we could also take out a 3 so that would make it 15. So make sure that whenever you take something out, you think about multiplying it back through and do I get the original? And always take out something as big as you can. Okay? You like this stuff or not like this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought you might. Okay, good. Any other questions? You guys doing alright with it? Okay. So, so here's the deal. Um, I only want to do one more problem from this section and then, um, and then we're going to move on to the next section just a little bit. Okay. But I want to introduce you to what's called the height time model. Okay, I don't know if we've dealt with this before. Okay, the height time model is, um, it basically gives us the height of something after so much time. Okay. And this will work on any planet as long as you choose the right gravitational coefficient. Okay? So what it's going to be is this. The height of an object is negative one-half g t squared. What's g? Gravitational pull. Gravitational pull. And that's different whether you're talking about um, uh, feet per second per second or meters per second per second. And, um, of course, if we're on different planets as well. V sub 0 times T. What do you think V stands for? No? Not velocity. But my velocity has a little zero underneath it, so what that means is my initial upward velocity. Okay? And this velocity is only just dealing with upwards. It's not dealing with horizontal movement at all. Okay? So I'm just taking a cat, throwing it up, straight up, and that's it. I'm not doing it like a shot put out there. Okay? Um, and then we have plus h sub 0. And h sub 0 is my initial height. Okay? So this actually is the basis of rocket science. Okay? Um, I, I'll tell you what, all that, I was watching a movie the other night um, and they were talking about different calculations that you have to make for this, that, and the other, and I was like, wow. Um, it's a 
mathematics is crazy. Because this is ignoring your distance from the Earth. As you get, like, say, 70 miles from the Earth, your gravitational constant starts to change. Okay? Um, because at some point in time, you escape Earth's gravity, and that's related to the, the mass of your object and the mass of the Earth and how far you are from the Earth. Because it's, it's really crazy. Um, what it impacts the gravitational constant of a, uh, of a celestial body is the mass of that thing. Like right now, um, we, have, we can figure out what the weight of the Earth is based upon how quickly it makes things drop. Okay? I don't know how... Have you guys taken physics yet? Okay. Have you guys talked about the, the, the two things are attracted to each other just based upon the fact they have mass? Okay. Yeah, so right now, I am attracted to Jack. And Jack is attracted to me. Okay. Okay. Now, if I would put on weight, he'd even be more attracted to me. Okay. So, well... So the deal is, is, is yeah, the, 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 uh, the, when you start getting into um, uh, the edge of space and stuff and rockets, oh man, things get really complicated really quick. So anyway, so anyway, G in Earth is going to be one of two things. It's going to be 32 feet per second squared, okay, and that's going to be negative. Um, actually... If that's negative and that's negative, so we're just going to keep that positive, okay, in this model. I shouldn't have put a negative there, I suppose. Um, but there's another way we can write it. It's um, um, 9.8 meters per second squared. Which one do you guys use in physics more? 9.8, okay. Sometimes you can even just round that to 10, and it's not going to make a huge bit of difference. Um, but... So if we would look at these, look at the equations based upon um, the different elements of gravity, it'd be this. H is equal to negative 16 T squared plus V sub zero T plus H sub zero. And then the other one would be negative 4.9 T squared plus V sub zero T plus H sub zero. All I did was I just plugged in my gravity and took half of it. Okay. Now, right now, there's really not much we can do with this besides just say, hey, if I would launch this cat vertically from 32 foot high at a rate of 100 feet per second, I could find out um, you know, how high the cat's going to be um, after a while. Okay? So let's do an example here real quick. Meow. Yeah. Okay. You know what's really funny is I've always used cats in my problems. My nephew Austin, uh, he took his, you know, he lived over in Germany for a long period of time because his parents were in the military. And he goes, yeah, I had the weirdest math teacher. He used cats in all his problems. You know, so it must be like a universal thing with mathematicians like to talk about throwing cats. Do you like cats? Oh, okay. No. They got to be cooked just right, I'm sure. You know, so um, now um, you know that I'm saying here too. You know, um, so that's it. Was, that wasn't a racist joke. That wasn't a racist joke. Um, they're laughing at that. That I, 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 they think I just said you eat cats. No, you don't eat cats. I know that. I know that. And I did not intend it that way. But I appreciate your, your laughing at that because uh, sometimes I wonder if you're even listening. Okay? So, it kind of reminds me. Um, anyway, I, anyway there's, a, there, there's a book of, that we could talk about too, but <clears throat> it's called 100 Ways to Walk a Dog. But anyway, um, a walk is a cooking device. But anyway um so let's do an example here real quick um so let's say we're on earth so we've got negative 16. my let's go my initial velocity 
So I'm going to throw it at a at a rate of oh let's go like this one um, uh, 128 feet per second. Reminds me of Tosh. What is it racist? I didn't intend it for it to be. Uh, let's say from the ground. Have we talked about this height time model at all in the past? Okay. Okay, good, good. Um, so we're just going to expand them just a little bit. Okay. So then what we would have is we could go ahead and write an equation. H is equal to negative 16t squared plus 128t and plus 0. I'm not going to write the plus 0. Okay. There's a lot of different things I could actually do with this now that I think about it. Using our parabola skills, we could find its maximum height using negative b over 2a. Okay. We're just going to massage this problem and, and work with it pretty good. Let's just make a little table here first. At zero seconds, it's at zero feet high. Okay. Let's go one, two, and three. Um, so let's go like this. Um, Jack Trey, plug in one. Uh, Jade and Josh, plug in two. Janina, Gary, plug in three. <coughs> video before I put it on YouTube. Okay, what did you guys get for one? 112 feet high. Already that cat's, it, kitty cat's up at 112 feet high. Okay. Two. 192. Three. 240. Okay. So what we have here is we've got a model that'll, that'll tell us how high this cat's going to be after a certain amount of time. Okay? Now we're going to blend in our other two things that we've talked about recently. Okay? Um, if I ask, um, how high did it go? Okay? How high did the kitty cat go? That makes us think of a maximum. It's a quadratic function, so I would go negative b over 2a, and that's the time at which my maximum height's going to occur. Okay? Maximum, that's our vertex that we've done before. So we have negative 128 over 2 times negative 16 gives me 4. So what does that tell me? Its maximum height occurs at 4 seconds. Okay? No, I just I throw kitty cannon. That I need to make and kitty cannon. That would be great. Okay, so so then how could I find out how high it went? I could just plug it in, right? Okay, so I'll just plug it in real quick. I'll go negative sixteen times. 16 uh, plus 128 times 4 gives me 256 feet. Okay, 256 feet high. Okay. Um, so, there's another thing we could do is we could ask when will it impact the ground. In other words, when will it land? Okay, well, what's my height when it lands? Zero. zero. So what I could do is I could take my equation, zero equals negative 16t squared plus 128t, okay, um, and I factor it. What can I take out? Yeah, it does. So I can take out what? 
16t. I'm going to take out a negative 16t. Well, let's take out the negative 2. What the heck? Okay. So if I take out a negative 16t, what am I left with in this first term? Just t. And my last term, it's going to be minus 8. So then my t's that make this true would be t equals 0 and t equals 8. Is it any surprise that our maximum height occurs halfway between? Yeah, it's a parabola, exactly. It's going to start at the ground. Yeah, my maximum height is going to occur halfway between. Yes, no animals were harmed in this video. I have never hurt a cat. No, that's really not true. You mean to make a disclaimer? Yeah, this disclaimer, yes. No hat, no cat. But when the video's over, I'll tell you the story. Okay. So anyway, so that's a situation where we can start to look at quadratics to talk about motion. You know, talk about um, acceleration. We could even use a little bit of calculus to find out how fast it was going when it hit the ground. But I'll tell you, it's 128 feet per second because um, it's symmetric. But anyway, um, so we could put all our skills to use. Say, hey, there's just maximum height. We could f set it equal to zero and factor it. Find that, and then and then um, you know, there's a lot of different skills we can put to use here. Okay, um, so so here's what I want to do. Um, the next section, I'm just trying to. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combo platter. This book doesn't really do a very good job with um, application problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign one problem from the book, from this book, and then I'm going to, f I've totally, totally changed my plans from today. Uh, and then I'm going to find, in a past textbook that I had, I'm going to find some other problems for you as well that to talk about some applications. Okay? So what we're going to start off with is page. 244, number 70. And I don't think we've done the ACT review uh, portion of this. So we'll go 87 through 90. We didn't do that last night, did we? Okay. And then um, 94. That'll be, yeah, I need to work that too. Okay. Um, yeah, so totally changed my plans. So I'm going to leave this recording go for a little bit because I'm going to come up with something that'll probably take me about five minutes. Are we going to test grade? Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Are we going to be doing imaginary numbers before we go to December 8th? Oh, yes. That is actually what we're going to be doing on Thursday. Okay. And the December 8th is the 14th, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes.
see what we're doing and we can yeah. Okay. So I wanted to fold in a little bit more of um, just writing your own equations to solve. Okay. 
So 94, that one's very straightforward, just one half base times height. 95, you remember the formula for the trapezoid? Base one, base two, average of the base two. Average of the base times your height equals your area. Base one plus base two divided by two times your height, good. 22, look back and see how we wrote that problem. Um, but basically the area of the border equals the area of the garden itself, okay? And 101, honestly, this is my favorite problem from that particular textbook. This is a real deal, okay? A little extra credit opportunity. If you want to do some research on this thing and bring me some information that I can show the class, or email me some in information I can show the class, I'll give you a point or so. And I will give you your quiz back here too. We'll probably build it tomorrow.